These Jeeps have a recall from the dealership, so go ahead and check with them before you spend money on a new PCM. Going about 60 miles an hour down the road, the PCM is shorting out, causing the motor to stall and the gauges to freak out. Alright, so I'm out here in Arizona. I've been doing many, many miles of off-road through all the back hills and I've developed a stall. And it keeps randomly stalling and sometimes it doesn't want to start. RPMs drop pretty hard on that one. So sometimes if I hold it up at 2000 RPMs, it'll die. Check it for codes. All right, so I'm gonna check it for codes. Just says done. Not giving me any codes. There it goes. No check engine light on. Check it for codes again. Done. Not giving me anything. If I keep my foot on a little bit on throttle, it'll stay running. That's me holding it there. If I let go, almost died out. Hold it at 2,000 RPMs for a second and then let off and it'll die. And it just dies out. Okay, so I'm replacing the PCM today. It's tucked back here behind this reservoir here. So let's go ahead and take this reservoir out. Get that loose. This side. For me. Take it off by hand. Disconnect this plug here. set this off the side so the dealership has been in here before when they did they broke all the tabs for these clips throughout here so it's kind of already halfway done for me for you it might be pretty difficult to get these tabs out all right what do we got next i think there's two bolts holding on here So let's go ahead and get this loosened up and out of your way. There's another one down here. Last one's down here for this guy. All right, there's one bolt down here at the very, very bottom down there that's held on from the underside over here. So come under the other side and look around and you'll find this bolt right here. That's the bolt you're gonna wanna undo to get the PCM out. 
Okay, now that I've got the bolts out, I'm trying to unplug all of it first, and then hopefully it slides up and out. So let's unplug these three clips. Oh, come on. I hate plugs. Come on. Got one. out they're color coded gray white black gently wiggling something as hard as the round to see what's going to be my way Once you've got all those harnesses loosened up, go ahead and move that computer up and out of your way so you could access the PCM. There we go. Slip that to the side. Very gently, pull this guy out of here. I've got harness, a harness here. Got to undo this uh, ground wire right here. Got to undo real quick. All right, big giant bolt holding that ground wire in there, and that's out of there. Go ahead and clean it up and replace it with the other unit. Okay, so there's three bolts holding the PCM to the bracket here. Got one, two, and three. Take these off and it'll come right off the bracket. Put your new one on, bolt it down, and let's go ahead and put this back in there. All right, now I got the new one mounted up. Let's go ahead and put it back in there, starting with that ground wire over here. There you are, Mr. Ground. Big giant bolt in there. And torque it down. After getting everything out of the way, it actually slides back into place pretty easily. Got to line that hole up down at the bottom down there. Go nice and easy. Actually a lot easier putting it back in than it was taking it out. There's bolts on here. Plug everything back in. All right, now to plug everything back in. Plugs are color coded so you can't go wrong getting them back in the right spot.
get these bolts back in this one. Bottom one down here is going to be kind of hard. Oh! Get right in there. in at the bottom down there. Plug these plugs back in where they were. Plug this one back into here. The problem with pulling these things out is they don't go back in. back in and that is completely done. The new PCM came pre-mapped to the VIN number on my vehicle but it still took about two tanks of fuel worth of mileage to relearn where the throttle position should be at. During that time it ran terribly.